about what is ethnicity. And it's, just, it's always striking to me that, especially in the United States, but not only in the United States, these words are synonymized. That, they, that is a uh, the ethnic concept, the ethnicity concept, can be used and is very frequently used as, a, uh, as an equivalent to the race concept, but it's really quite different. Um, ethnicity is a, a matter of culture. It's much more fungible than race is. Ethnicity is about your religion, your language, your cuisine, perhaps your national origin, your dress. It can be changed. It can change in ways that race cannot. You can immigrate, lose your national origin. You can convert your religion. You can learn another language. You can stop eating what you were used to eating and start eating something quite different. Um, now, of course, this brings the body back in in a peculiar way. Is the body something that you really cannot change? I think in a general way, yes. If you are marked on your body as a part of a particular race, then in general, you are going to remain part of that race. But again, ethnicity and race do, we have to admit, overlap in certain ways. The overlap would be that yes, it is possible to change your race. It has been possible, at least a little bit. Different, at least on, in terms of the experiential level, people have passed, people have concealed their racial identities. And on a more comprehensive level, the meanings of race have changed and the assignment of raciality to different groups has changed. So that Jews were a race in Nazi Germany. They have sort of ceased to be a race now. Jews were a race in the United States. The Irish were a race. They had become an ethnicity, an ethnic group. It's quite interesting that there, I, I say one category, ethnicity, ethnicity is fungible and one race is not, but that's really not quite true, is it? Because race is a social construct, it can move, it can change over time. Ethnic, ethnic groups can be racialized, racial groups can be deracialized. That has happened, that is happening. There's an instability that's fundamental. I want to say one thing about racism, which, which Vince didn't ask me to talk about. In um, the United States particularly, but again, I think we are just a case, albeit a big case, of a world historical phenomenon. In the United States, race is so fun fundamental to our identities, collective as well as individual, that racism becomes a fundamental marker, a key marker of how we see ourselves and each other. We're, none of us are exempt from it. Um, in the sociological literature, we've reached a place, I'm not sure if this is the final place, where racism is broken down, has been broken down into three uh, generally separate, but also overlapping uh, dimensions. One dimension, the one most familiar to all of us, is the dimension of beliefs and attitudes. Sort of mental constructs, the way we see other people as racialized and our beliefs in the, uh, about the nature of racial difference. This generally uh, involves questions of superiority, inferiority, um, 
attribution of particular characteristics to individuals, such uh, familiar phenomena as stereotyping, xenophobia, um, that sort of thing. Um, second area is what we generally call discrimination. But I would, if it, I would change that a little bit to say if prejudice is one area, ideas and beliefs, discrimination is a second area, but it's really about actions, and therefore it's not just treating people differently, allocating resources positively or negatively along the lines of race, but also actions of different types. For example, violence, the use of violence along racial lines, lynching, race riots, that sort of thing. A third area of racism that we've talked about that we want to include in this is structural. And that is, when we're talking about structural racism, we're talking about the accumulation, the cumulative qualities of race, that, of racism, rather that uh, um, what happens in the exercise of racism builds up. It's not lost. If you are jailed, that has consequences for the, certainly for the rest of your life. If you're incarcerated, you know, have great difficulties when you come out of jail and so on and so forth. But those consequences will also apply to your children and maybe your grandchildren and so on. It's very, very, makes it much more difficult for your children to have a uh, uh, free or equal life if, if their parents was, was incarcerated. Um, if you receive an unequal education, that will, because of racial seg segregation, let's say, in education, that will have consequences for you for your whole life and will be passed on to your children as well because they will have certain disadvantages that came from the disadvantages that you have. And think about this as accumulating over generations. Think about it in terms of wealth distribution along racial lines for example, accumulating over generations and uh, institutionalizing a certain structuring into society, a certain fundamental or seemingly almost fundamental inequality. So those three areas, prejudice, discrimination, structural, race, uh, structural accumulative racism are the key dimensions of that concept. I will stop. Mm -hmm.